first lesson is a phonics lesson, and it's one that I would be teaching to first grade students. And I think you'll see how uh, this is probably a little different than what's usually done in a phonics lesson. This comes out of Lucy Calkins' work. She's got brand new phonics curriculum. So I was thinking about a walk that I had taken a while back when we were on vacation, and I will read it to you. I saw a bear. I stopped walking. I stayed very still. Then I slowly started to back away. I want you to look at those words that I have underlined up there. What do you notice about those words? They all start with S-T. They do, don't they? What else do you notice? They're like action, stop, stay, started. They are. I was moving, I stopped, I stayed, and then I started moving the other direction. What else do you notice? They end in ED. They all end in ED. Well, they sure do, don't they? But let's listen. I'm going to read it again. I want you to listen closely. I saw a bear. I stopped walking. I stayed very still. Then I slowly started to back away. What do you notice about those words now? They have two parts. Mm -hmm. More than one syllable. What else? It means they have ED, but they sound different. OK. So how does this one sound at the end? Stop. <laughs> like a T. What about this one? With a D. With a D. What about this one? E D. E D. Or it started. Okay. So one of the things I've been noticing lately in your writing is that a lot of us are writing the word stopped, and when we write it, we put a T at the end, because that's what we hear. And so I just want us to really think about all the ways that we can spell E D how we can spell it and how it sounds differently. So I put those up on a chart here. And we're going to be filling in this chart in a little bit. But before we do that, I have some things that I'm going to have you do in groups of two. So each group gets a little envelope here. Turn around and do it with that table. Okay. There's another one. You have those same words that have the T, the ID, and the D on it. Pull those out and put them across the top of your table. Everybody see what I mean? Okay, and then I want you to put the cards underneath the one they sound like. If they sound like t, put them under stopped. If they sound like d, put them under stayed. If they sound like, you don't have another one? Just a second. You've got a packet that didn't have them on. Let's get you a different packet. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> So we have stayed, played. Oh, I love hearing you say those words. Kicked. <laughs> worked. I, I put the T. Okay, we got the same again. Okay, played. Stayed, played. <laughs> All right. Let's see some of the words that you got there. What do you have under T? Each table can give me one. We have worked, liked, kicked. Wow. You all have those under the T? Good for you. What do you have under the ID? Back table? Added, 
planted, visited. Okay. And now the D. The first table here. Smelled. Moved. Played. Played. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Now, I have some books for each of you to look at together. And I want you to find the ED words and let's see where they go. One's upside down. <laughs> it's a little hard to look at it that way. Okay, who found an ED word? Jamie, what'd you find? So for like the, we did ruled under the D. Okay, ruled. Jenna? I found munched. Well, where does that go? It goes in there. Like stuff. Ah. Hunted. Where does it go? Were there any others? Hatched. Hatched. Where does it go? Stayed. 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 this lesson and what I did. First of all, did I give you a worksheet? No. No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, students don't really transfer what they do on a worksheet to what they actually do when they're really reading. So that is really an ineffective way for us to teach phonics. But uh, pulling it out as a skill and teaching it in you sorting and actively working as a partner. You get to talk about it and think about what you're doing. And then by giving you a book, what happens? You get to see it in the text. You get to input it into a text and understand how that isolated work that we did for just a few minutes works when you're reading it in a book. Do you see how we made that transition? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to hand out a sheet of more commonly ways to tell kids about the ED. I want you to look at it, talk at your table about the effectiveness of that tool. Look at those long directions. <laughs> you talk about it. What do you notice? <laughs> I feel like we'll skip all that because they're not going to read it. Like, Yes, so you would find your turn to like your turn. Are you a little confused by that sheet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think children would be confused by that sheet? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. I think it's just the appearance even is just overwhelming. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Uh -huh. There's just too much going on on that page. Yeah. And the directions don't quite make it as easy as what we did together as a group. Yeah. They don't even, they can't even read that. <laughs> <laughs> how can they read that? So you see, this is how it's normally taught what I just gave you. That's the kind of teaching that a lot of first grade kids end up getting in their phonics teaching. It is never put into a context. It's all done in isolation. There's not a rhyme or reason as to why it is that way. And so you can see how 
doing that skill together in a group. Lucy would have us do it. So instead of you at your seats, as adults, I don't want you sitting on the floor, so <laughs> I'm letting you sit at your seats. But she would have everybody gathered around in a little circle here up on the, the corner where we do our shared reading. And she would begin with the one I took off already and read it and talk with you about it. Then right there at the rug, you would work with your partner on your set of cards, and then you would get the book, read it, and then have it put up here. That would all be done right while you're there in the group. No isolated work back at your seat. Talk about how you see that as working for kids. Hands-on and manipulating the letters to make the words or manipulating the words. Yeah, they're very much interactive with it, aren't they? They're engaged. They're much more engaged. It was fun listening to you as adults talking and saying the word and listening to the end and figuring out where it would go. What else? You guided the discussion when you first read the sentence. You asked, what do you, what do you see about these words? So you engaged them in thinking about what was anything special, anything they would notice. And starting with ST, noticing that, that's a very good skill for first graders to have. Mm -hmm. You know, so the comments that were made that weren't necessarily about the ED ending were very good comments, and somebody in the room might not have noticed that. So that's going to help them to begin to notice something more than they had noticed. So all of your comments were very productive. And how did I respond? Did I say, no, that's not what I'm looking for? <laughs> you kept asking questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kept probing, didn't I? asking you to think deeper, think about more options that you could think about because there's something more here we could, could pull out of that. And so um, the modeling, the working together with a partner, then putting it into the context of a book versus the Skillsheet approach. Okay, stop.